Welcome to Windsor, Ontario, and welcome to We Digital as we present to you OCAA basketball doubleheader action tonight from the St. Clair College Sportsplex. It's the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles against the St. Clair Saints. And good evening again, everybody. This is Aaron Sanders with Royal Church. Glad to have you with us as always. And Royal, the story begins with the Mississauga Eagles. They won their first four games, but they lost their last nine. Only in their second year in the OCAA, but the positive side about it is they got one of the OCAA's leading scorers on their side. Yeah, they have Jada Dye. She wears uh, number two for all those people watching out in We Digital Land. And uh, she averages 18.5. And I believe, uh, pretty sure she's third in the league, in the entire league in scoring. So uh, she's by far their best player. They struggle after that, Aaron, to put the ball in the basket. Their next best player averages 9.5. Uh, as you mentioned, they're 4-9 uh, and, and near the bottom of the West standings. Absolutely. And keep in mind, they're going to be a little short staff tonight, playing only eight players in this game. But as for St. Clair, we turn the tables around because they're getting healthier and healthier every day. The last game, they got Logan Casera back. Tonight, they get Norbazi back. And another player that we are going to see for the first time tonight, Kim Morrow. Yeah, Kim Maroon, actually. Uh, Kim Maroon uh, played high school ball at, uh, at Bell River, went to the university, played a little bit there. Uh, she's in the um, paramedic course here at uh, St. Clair College, which is a very difficult course. Uh, and, and she's doing very well, as a matter of fact. And I guess they just kind of picked her up as a last-minute replacement late in the season in case they need somebody big and strong. She's a little older, 25 years old, but she's been around. She's a smart athlete. She knows what she's doing. Absolutely. The last time both of these two teams met was in late November, where the St. Clair Saints prevailed 74-69 to against the Eagles. The Saints led 47-28 at halftime, but the Eagles outscored the Saints in the third and fourth quarter alone. Otto Lichney led the way for the Saints, while Jada died would you expect led the way for the Eagles. A lot has changed in the last few weeks for both of these clubs. It's a matter of who will win, who will end their losing streak tonight. That's the game between the Eagles and the Saints. And when we return here on We Digital, Justin Prince and I will have the call for you. You're watching St. Clair Saints basketball on We Digital. Hi, I'm Curtis Joseph, former NHL goalie. You're watching We Digital. This is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Hi, I'm Josie, and I'm your co host of the We Digital production, We Now. Anyone interested in promoting a business, an event, a book signing, or maybe even just making aware of the movers and shakers of Windsor Essex County, we now can do that for you. We'll get your word out. So make sure you email me at josie at we-tv.ca to book an in-studio session that will air live on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Number 14 in their lineup, Mississauga Eagles. As we look at your 
Yep. Sarah Casera back out Tompkins. That time, Tompkins. That time. Trying nice to find Janica Sarah down low past to Logan. Logan gets it stuck away. Here comes Logan. the rush. Hey, he slow it back on down in terms of pace. Trisha Ball lined up once again with Viano. Viano slowing it on down. Other on it. Yep. Taking on the wing now, Bo. Bo for the turn. Doesn't get the lucky bounce. Janica Sarah grabbed on the rebound. And that draws our first whistle, just 9.24 to go in the first, just under 40 seconds in air. When it comes to both of these teams tonight, I think the key plan is the rebound. Make sure you control the glass. Even though St. Clair looks a little bit mismatched at the present time, it doesn't mean they don't show that aggression. We've seen them show that aggression in the last couple of games, but the rebounding presence wasn't there this past Wednesday. Shot down low, no good. And the Saints still not on the board so far. And once again, you can see back and forth right down to the basket. Both of these clubs not afraid to going right down to the basket. And we have a quick baseline inbounds pass. Three seconds on the shot clock. Third in points per game. And Yelechny misses down low. And there's, there's another top 10 scorer right there from Olichny. Zelina puts up the shot, no good. Once again, battle for rebound. Rolls out of bounds. And they say Eagles possession off St. Clair. Once again, a little, a little bit of chippiness going on here today. Both of these clubs, I understand they're trying to establish the pace of this game, but you have to slow down, let the plays breathe, and the game will come to you. That was a real good look for Trisha Vole. The defense just slid away right now near the basket. That just allowed Trisha Vole to pull up for the jumper. Again, this is not a good sight, and keep in mind, they're short staff tonight. Eight people for the team tonight. And it's a good thing she was able to get up from that. Janela Viado getting right back up. And you know what? It's the hustle. You realize that when your team is short staffed, a lot of people is going to have to step up, get more minutes on the floor, and this is the best way to show it. That type of hustle is something the Eagles need, and if they keep on playing this for the rest of the way, they could break that nine game losing streak. Down back out of bounds to 11 still on the shot clock. Still 
7.45 to go in the first quarter here on Wee Digital. Still no score. Tries to drive in the lane, misses with the left hand. Picked up by Kim, once again, Jenna Casera. Casera loses the treble, stolen away by the Eagles. Held ball drawn. And possession arrow. Looking at the direction here, they say foul, in fact, is the call here. Almost two minutes and 30 seconds in, JP. Neither team has scored, as you could see. They're hustling for the ball once again, but somebody has to put the ball through the hoop and score the first point of the game. The quick three is no good for Olichny. But once again, you see the Eagles, they're not letting up. They're picking up the pace, and they're running right down to the court. As you see, Viado down at the corner. Right down to the corner. There's that quick steal. And it's Janica Serra who couldn't finish it off. Good. And who else to expect to score the first bucket than Jada died? After so many times getting the transition going on, she finally found a way to shoot it off the dribble. Picked up Tompkins, second chance, meanwhile, for St. Clair. Ten seconds on the shot clock, 6.40 to go in the first. Selena diving to the floor. Back up to Logan Casera. Three on the shot clock. In traffic, the hook misses. Still no bucket so far for St. Clair. They start 0 for 8 from the field, Aaron. And it's quite interesting to see Kirsten Zelian get out-rebounded like that. 2-3 zone for the Saints. Already break down. Still working with the Fiano. Fiano can set the shot, no good. And a whistle called this time over and back. In fact, tied up as Yolichny caught the foul. We're going to have to see a replay of that because it could have gone either way, JP. Saints are pleading their case that she got pulled but well, the referees are saying that she dragged her the whole way near the elbow. So far, two fouls for Jade Adai in this first quarter so far. Foul leads to one of our first substitutions of the game. Coming in, Nora Bossi for St. Clair. After being on concussion protocol the past couple weeks, she watches as the three's no good once against the Eagles. And that's one of the key things when it comes to Nora Bazzi and everybody else. The Saints got to limit their threes and try to find some way to get closer baskets. No, let you And that's good for her because she only scored two points that last game against Humber. Just a good start for her. Let's see how long she can hold this up. Eagles pick up the rebound, approaching halfway to the first quarter. Lining up the offense once again, Beato. Beato matched up with Bazzi on the floor for St. Clair's while Tompkins lined up to Kelly Schofield, lining up the five for Lexi and Alunamon. Triple, no good, picked up by Tompkins. And that's what Kirsten Tompkins could do best. She could fly right in, get a cut in, and go for the rebound. So in a way, though, once again by a die, a die. And the poked away. Eagles keep possession. And she had a die. We have to talk about her third in the league in points per game so far. Fifth in steals coming into today's game with 18 half points per game. You know what? She's been there since the beginning for this OCAA version of the Mississauga Eagles, JP. She led scoring for the team last year, and she's doing the same thing this year. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Triple. Uh, no good from Silva. And we go back the other direction. Substitutions coming in. As some new substitutions for St. Clair here, and it's a new player for St. Clair, in fact, on the floor. Number 23, Kim Maroon. You know what, this is somebody that we, that all of us talked about bringing to Cleveland for JP. A Bell River native. She's taking the paramedics course over here at St. Clair. This is the type of player that Andy Kiss wanted because they were suffering from the rebounds the last couple of games. And with her limited minutes, if she puts up a good performance, they'll bring up a lot of intensity down in the glass for St. Clair. There were also a couple of su substitutions for the Eagles on that possession. As now Jenna Casera no good on the shot. Second chance picked up by St. Clair. Maroon kind of gets the shot to go. Tapped back out of bounds. Stay St. Clair possession with nine on the shot clock. They reset the 14. 
And you can see Kim Maroon immediately making an impact. Even though that she couldn't maintain her balance off that shot, it went off the left side. She was able to take that rebound down, rep reposition herself, and go for the fadeaway. That's the type of confidence St. Clair needs right down on the post. Shot clock replaced, back to nine. Back down low, Maroon. Put the shot, gets it. And that's Kim, Kim Maroon's first two points right there. But how can St. Clair build up that adrenaline and confidence? Putting up the shot, Kayla Rice, meanwhile, no good. Picked up by Norbazi. Janica Sarah rushes up center. Back down low. Kim Maroon down. Remember how the last couple of games I said for the men's side, T.G. Howard came off the bench and scored effectively nine points. Kim Maroon's looking a little bit like that. Just give the ball to her, and she'll be able to finish it off. Looking effective so far. On the floor, meanwhile, for the Eagles, Victoria Silver lines up with Kayla Rice. Whistle called. As we have in our stoppage, this one may potentially be against Maroon. You know, I don't mind that kind of foul, J.P., because... Again, she scored four quick points, which means she's gonna, going to have enough energy and confidence to go right down to the basket. Now the Eagles are seeing they cannot respond down low, so they have to find some way to drive right down, and they did, and they're off to the free throw line. Victoria Silver to the line to shoot for two, a 57% free throw shooter on the season. As a team, University of Toronto Mississauga just 57% from the stripe, 17th in the OCAA area. And keep in mind, some of these players are new too. Only five players came back for the Eagles this year as they are embarking in their second campaign in the OCAA. Bozzi puts up the jumper, yes! Nor Bozzi gives St. Clair a two-point lead. First lead of the game for them. One of the most important things for St. Clair and North Bazzi to do is to gain more confidence to take more shots because she did that as a part of the Massey Mustangs. Elena Jar pass back outside. In traffic, D'Souza gets it poked away. Janica Sarah getting the steal. Jenna tries to take it back up. Pass to the perimeter goes to no man's land. It's now the eternal vote. It looked like it was intended to go to the corner, either to Ahmad or Logan Gassera. But keep in mind, if nobody is there at the right position to get the pass, it's going to prompt into a turnover. And remember, we talked about this time and time again. Those corners are tricky. A couple substitutions coming in for the Eagles in that stoppage as well. Jamie Schultz coming in now for St. Clair. Brian, down low, shot no good. Alan Najar drawing the whistle as it will stay at that side of the floor. 14 seconds now in the shot clock as the Eagles keep possession. Good tussle from the ball for both of these clubs, but again, the possession arrow determines the fate, and the Eagles get the ball back. Jada died. A die, no good on the triple. And Maroon able to pick up the rebound and draw the whistle. Good performance so far from Ken Maroon. Only two minutes into this game. Four quick points and a couple of rebounds to boot, too. Interesting. Almajar called off for her second personal of the game on the foul. 2.35 to go in the first quarter. Janica Serra back out to Maroon. Maroon back to Janica Serra. Giolicci for three. No good. Picked up Logan to Serra's second chance. Logan trying to pass it outside. And it's tapped out of bounds by the Eagles. That time tapped by the hand of Najar. Good awareness from Logan Casera, just cutting from the right to the left to get that pass. 2.18 to go in the first. Janica Serra, no good on the shot. Picked up by the Eagles on the rebound. Whistle called. And it looks like a foul up the floor, potentially. It's either that or, yeah. as we see, Number six, Janella Viado. She went down to the ground after mm. Cassara tried to drive. No foul has been called yet, so yeah. just a quick stop as a play to see if Janella's all right. In terms of player safety thing there, you don't want to risk our player getting injured or at all, really. Well, keep in mind, Viado already uh, went to the floor in the early stages of this game, and hopefully she stays all right because, again, Coach Sally Johnson's depending on those eight players to step up and put on a big game. Beato passed out to Adai. Adai, the triple, just rims out. Picked up on the rebound, Selena this time, as Janica Sarah gives it off to Yelichny. St. Clair holds just a two-point lead under two minutes to go in the first. 
Janica Sarah pass out to Yelichny. Janica Sarah gets off off the floor. Zelina down low, double team. Jamie Chauvin out to Yelichny. With six on the shot clock misses. Still, St. Clair cannot buy a bucket. Four of 18 from the field, Aaron. Not a good performance as a die trying to go for the Euro step. She'll be fouled down low. But to go yep. back to your point, they're getting all those good looks. It's either they can maintain their balance just to let it go off in the center, or they're just forcing those shots. That shot from Anna Olichny was a good one, but again, the rim is just not giving way. Works up to two Jennifer Sarah come, comes out along with Yelichny. Tompkins and Bassey come back in. Logan Casera misses. Logan draws the reach. Got the foul reaching in on D'Souza on the rebound. 14 foul for St. Clair, her second of the game. You know, being aggressive is good, but once again, you have to keep, you got to keep your hands away from your defender or your opponent, if you will, or else the referees will call that nine times out of ten. St. Clair just over the limit after this foul. Putting up the shot once again. The Eagles no good on the triple. That time, Vo picked up second chance down the baseline. Pass the back out of die. A die spins in traffic. Can't get the banker to roll. Tompkins passes it up to Bazzi under a minute to go in the first quarter here on Weed to Drill Productions. Bazzi pressured on the perimeter. Back outside. Janica Sarah for the triple. No good again. And still, neither team can buy a bucket here in this first. It hasn't been it hasn't been a shooting contest in the last few minutes, JP. Now you have to play defense. That's all you could do. And that was one of the main points Andy Kiss had mentioned pre-game in terms of the shooting, at least for St. Clair's side. Meanwhile, second chance in progress for the Eagles. Contest the jump shot off the front rim once again. Battle for the rebound, picked up Logan Casera. Casera has Tompkins open on the right side. Draws the whistle. Jada Dye coming in on the defense, call for the foul. Once well, again, Jada Dye coming in, denying Kirsten Tompkins any chance of getting an easy layup. Considering how the shooting's been going, JP, nobody could buy a basket like you said, but Jada Dye did a good job stopping her. Unfortunately, that's a foul for her. And Logan Casera comes off the floor, as mentioned, drawed her second personal on the last stoppage as Tompkins makes the first of two. St. Clair Saints, as the team from the free throw line, seventh in the league, 64%. 63% shooting. Shot clock is off for the final minute, seconds of the first quarter. A dime, guarded by Bozzi. Trying to spin into the paint, double team, back outside. It's at the triple air ball, no good. And after one quarter play, 10 to 6 is your score here on Weeds of Joe Productions. Did you know that the most severe injuries in our region are motor vehicle crashes? 65% of road fatalities last year were directly the result of distracted driving. 90% of injuries arriving in our emergency rooms are preventable. Our message to you this summer is put down the phone, just drive. Let's work together to keep our trauma stretchers empty. We are resilient, often knocked down, but never backing down. You can spend your whole life on the outside looking in, or you can live it on the inside, because that's where your passion lives. The drive to push beyond the naysayers, to find the fire that ignites your toughness. Because the truth is, winning always comes when you start from within. I want to understand why. I want this to be perfect. I want to be inspired. I want to be challenged. No matter the reason, our passion to learn brought us here. We're of OCAA Women's Basketball here from the St. Croix College Sportsplex. 
10 to 6 is your score after one quarter play. And Aaron, it has been a struggle if you're a fan of offense. Not only a struggle, but it's been sloppy so far. A lot of teams, a lot of, both of these clubs are getting good looks right now. But the problem is they haven't been finding ways to get that basket into the hole. Good chances at the free throw line. Haven't been able to capitalize on that. So how do you, how do you size up with that? You have to play great defense. And again, keep on getting the closest shots possible. Because you're seeing a lot of hustle, especially from the backcourt on some plays, JP, from St. Clair. They put a little bit of a trap right there, and Mississauga always finds ways to break it up as second quarter is underway. On the floor for St. Clair, Logan Casera, Janet Casera lined up with Maroon, along with Kirsten Tompkins and Yelichny as the two's made. St. Clair able to get a six-point lead. They go for the zone press and able to get the steal, trying to draw the whole held ball. And it looks like the possession arrow either way goes back to the Eagles. Good hustle from St. Clair. Immediately after the basket, you had two players all over the backcourt applying that trap. And you I have no choice but to tie it up. Indeed, right now, as you see the adjustments being called from Coach Kiss on his sideline, where he start off this possession. Once again, your referees, Susie Pisa Coley, along with Jamie Ireland, Holly Foster are your referees tonight. As we have a discussion before we start back up, Tompkins to play the inbounder here for this start of possession with 9.42 to go in the first half. Jenna Kassara and Anna Lichny up top, trying to deny any chances for Jay to die or Trisha Vaux to get the ball. Able to get to Trisha Vaux. Vaux takes it towards half court. Vaux trying to charge back in, able to find a die. A die outside of Vaux for the triple. Couldn't get the banker. Picked up by D'Souza. Second chance goes off the back rim. Picked up once again. Vaux for another three, no good. St. Clair finally able to grab the rebound. And St. Clair still leads by six. This continues to be something that St. Clair struggled with all week is offense inside and out. Maroon. Meanwhile, can't get it to go. There's a little bit hard of a touch right there for Kim Maroon to put it off the glass. But again, a good look, something St. Clair's been looking for in the last few minutes. Eagles currently with possession just under a minute into the second quarter here on Weed Digital Productions. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders. St. Clair leads 12 to six here in the second. Vo airballs the shot out of bounds as we'll go back the other direction once again and another shot goes off the wayside. Just two made shots in the field so far from the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles as Maroon comes out, coming in, Kirsten Zelina. But keep in mind, those shots are just good looks. It's just not a stronger execution when it comes to those shots, JP. Indeed, right now, you gotta remember too, this is a building progress with the Eagles, second year in their program's history as Yelichny drains the triple. You'll actually be able to grow the lead up to nine. Remember, coming into today, 57 points per game was the average for the Eagles, scoring wise. 18th, though, field goal percentage wise. And keep in mind, they went up against Humber the last game as that teardrop falls. And they played against Humber. Those, they had two quarters where they only scored single digits. Unfortunately, 29 mm -hmm. exactly at the, by the finish of that game in the 75 29 loss. St. Clair trying to turn on the afterburners as the shot's no good inside. Fast break now, Jada Dye leads it in. At the free throw line, gets the banker. And that's one of the main positives for this Eagle squad, mind you, with a die as we discussed a little bit in the first. She was very smart with that play, JP. She only knew she had one defender right in front of her. Even though she got chased down, she would have been called, she would have drew the foul right from behind. So she was able to get enough separation away from Olichny, and she got the jumper to go. Tompkins, meanwhile, gets the pass down low, air balls the initial shot, still 30 on the clock. Janica Sierra for three, off the front rim. A dime picks up another rebound, that's just her second so far. She tries to take it coast to coast. Able to find foe, outside, open, again off the front rim. Janica Sierra able to get the long rebound. Outside to Yolichny, Yolichny baseline, has it rejected down the line. Trisha Foe able to get back on defense quickly. You know As Bazzi and Amon come in. You just have to be at the right place at the right time. You've seen Trisha Vo, she was camping right down to the paint. She knew she was going to get an awkward opportunity to block it, and she took it. Quick timeout. 
Timeout called on the floor. First of the game, in fact, here, just past the eight-minute mark to go in this first half. Last game, of course, for the St. Clair Saints, coming off a tough loss, 64-51, to where they trail by just seven. In fact, Saints rather led after the third quarter by seven. However, it was a fourth quarter collapse for St. Clair for a second straight game essentially for them. 25 to five outscored in that fourth. And you and I were scratching our heads seeing what happened in the fourth quarter. They had a good run going on at the start of the second half, but Lampton, they passed the ball around real well and they were able to get open shots and they were able to be confident with their decisions. One of the main things Coach Kiss emphasized after that game in the discussion with him a little bit before pregame was the need to rely less on three-point shooting. Top in, in the OCAA around that mark in attempts, however, the field goal percentage is just 24.4%. When the shots are not falling, that's not the smartest shot possibility. You know, and I could understand Andy Kiss's reasoning because you may have the open looks all the time, but the majority of them a majority of those shots are coming from behind the arc, JP. They don't have a lot of presence down in the post, so that's why they're able to space themselves out, get the ball rotation, and shoot threes. But no, if you have the mid-range shot, if you're able to go down in the traffic, you have to take those shots. It doesn't have to be the threes all the time. You live by the three, you die by the three, and they died by the three this past Wednesday night. Indeed they did, and so far they've been trying to play more inside. Just seven attempts from outside the arc as Bonzi's shot was no good. Vogue tries to take it up. Vogue slows it back down now for the Eagles. Pulls up off the front rim. Viato rather part of apologies to fans at home as it's picked up by Logan Casera. To Bonzi, Bonzi down the baseline, yes! And Nor Bonzi able to get the layup. Tapped loose by Ahmad, hello basketball. As it bounces its way off the scores table to Andy Kiss. And once again, one of the greatest skills that Kaluta Ahmad has is the ball awareness on the defense. She's able to take that ball away in midair and just lock down on the defense when she has a player. One of the best, if not the best crowds all season so far, the St. Croix College Sportsplex in attendance here tonight. With six minutes to go in the first half, shot no good from the outside, picked up second chance by Yelichny. Down low, Logan Casera no good. Picked up D'Souza with the rebound. On the floor for the Eagles, Viano lined up alongside D'Souza, along with a die, rounding out the five, Victoria Silver, alongside on the outside, Gina uh, Alajar, pardon me. D'Souza gets the pass with seven. Back outside, Viato. Viato finding D'Souza. In traffic, no good. Zelina able to get the tiptoe rebound, but stripped away. Eagles get the quick bucket. Once again, not a good decision. When you're right down near the baseline, it's kind of hard to spread out and try to look up and get an open pass away. And St. Clair was just smothered down to the baseline. Down the baseline goes Ahmad for the mid-range jump shot. Gets it. There's that mid-range game you're talking about to try and wake up. The closer, the better. Double team coming from St. Clair. Ahmad forces the turnover. Goes on Fiano. You see, the closer the shots, the better. The closer you are on your man on defense, the better. As you've seen that double team near the sideline, they're able to trap him, and the ball goes the other way. Back onto the floor now for St. Clair. You see going on Kim Maroon, the Bell River, Ontario native. Alarm with Janet Cassera, now lined up with Bazzi. Alon with Kirsten Tompkins rounding out the five. Once again is Logan Cazera. Pardon me, Tom, pardon me, Amon. Bozzi puts up the mid-range, no. Maroon puts up the second chance, couldn't make it as it's picked up by Silva. Halfway through the second quarter here. The Eagles star playing very, very, keeping this game rather close so far. One of the main things they were looking to prove upon heading into today was defensive intensity and communication. As this one's tapped on back, Kayla Rice couldn't keep the possession. Jenica Serra goes coast to coast and draws the whistle on the arm. And that's not the type of defensive. Uh, defensive. Uh, and it's on a sportsman-like foul called. This will go against Kayla Rice on the fast break. Not a good decision from Kayla Rice, but this is not the type of defensive intensity that Coach Edwards was looking for. For those wondering with an unsportsmanlike foul, Jenica Sarah will have the opportunity to have the free throws, but St. Clair will keep possession of the ball as well. Missing the first of two that time, Jenica Sarah on the season in terms of free throw shooting this year, 
69% entering tonight. And the way the situation is, it's similar to a technical foul where you do get the ball back and a chance to go to the line. Able to make the second of two. Topkins will have the inbound. St. Clair trying to break a two-game losing spell here for the women's side as the buzzer goes off right before they play through. 12 on the shot clock. Fossey off the window, yes. And for the first time tonight, St. Clair leads by double digits. Once again, we all know Nora Bazzi is good for shooting from the mid-range from downtown, but when you get that cut to the basket, you have to take care of business. Turned over by the Eagles once again. Slightly fun fact, 31 turnovers were forced in that last loss for St. Clair to Lampton. So far, six for the Eagles. And it's interesting, a lot of people would say with those amount of turnovers they have caused, they would win the game. But it all mattered to the fourth quarter. Indeed, Janica Serra drains the mid-range meanwhile as St. Clair controls the momentum. Trying to break through the press as the Eagles as it's thrown right on and away. Trying to find Silva. And all of a sudden, St. Clair controls all the momentum. Viano comes back onto the floor now. Once again, St. Clair, one of the top teams when it comes to applying that full court press. It's working real well for them so far. They're, they're causing those turnovers for the Eagles. And now they're able to space the ball out and work it. Maroon gets it to go outside. Gets marked as a two. Up to 14 is the lead. Ball tapped out of bounds on the quick inbound. A 10 end for Tasha Rooms. As it will stay Eagles possession after the tap. You know, that's a good hustle from Kim Maroon. One end she gets the basket. On the other end, she has her mindset on the defense. That three won't go. And there she is with another rebound. And Maroon picking up the rebound. Slowly being taken up by Janica Serra. Maroon, mid-range, no good. Gets her own mitts down low, able to find Jenna. Down to Ahmad, hooks it off the back rim. Tap back out to Maroon as it stays St. Clair possession. And Kaylee Chauvin coming back into the game. Now for St. Clair, coming in for Maroon. As now, a couple more substitutions. In fact, Yelichny and Jamie Chauvin also coming in for St. Clair. How about the hustle from Kim Maroon and everybody else. You could see the confidence go up a little bit when Kim Maroon's on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, the majority of the season, they would always be mismatched down low, JP. Now they finally got a big body that could take care of business off the glass, and you could see everybody else getting involved because of those chances. Full court press. This time, the Eagles are able to break into the half court. Stolen away by Norm Bozzi. Bozzi leads up the fast break. Out to Tompkins as it's tapped out of bounds as it will stay St. Clair possession. And one of the keys at this point is looking like defensively has been the press for St. Clair, trying to take advantage of the short short roster tonight as Tompkins comes out for Janica Serra. And remember, that was the key of the game for the Saints this past Wednesday night. And it worked out in the early stages, and that caused Lampton to cough up a number of those turnovers as, well as Janica Serra goes inside. Janica Serra getting the layup. She's up now to nine points in the first half. A dive puts up the contested jump shot, meanwhile misses. Picked up the rebound by Jana Casera. Casera, the top player in the OCAA in points per game, watches as it goes down. Luna Jamie Chauvin, yes. Timeout called once again on the floor, this time by the Eagles. As the fans see this lead balloon from what was single digits to 18 points. Let's take a look at your women's basketball West standings, meanwhile, as St. Clair with that loss earlier this week in a tough situation. It was a must win with the battle for four for the Wednesday now at 500. They're hoping to at least try and be, have a chance to be in a play in the game in the East. Absolutely, remember that Wednesday game was a must win for them. Now they're at seven and seven. For the Eagles on the other end, they had a really hot start at the beginning of their season. They won four straight and then they lost nine straight. So that's why they're fourth last into the division right now. And keep in mind, those first couple of losses came down to really close decisions. Indeed, some of those did. The past two losses, 72-67, 64-51, as some of the losses in terms of the Eagles as they trail by 18. A lot of those games in the early, they won the first four, we should note, against Mohawk Redeemer and at so at so College. Then afterwards, have gone on this losing spell where since then, 
games have been in 20 plus in a majority, but there's but the last time they played St. Clair on December 2nd was their closest loss so far in that losing streak, 74-69. Yeah, it, Anno Lichney scored 22 points from that game, and Jada Dye was the leading scorer with 25. But if you look at the last two games from the Eagles, a big challenge for them. They had to play Fanshawe their first game of 2019. They lost that by 46, and then they lost 79 to 29 against Humber. Big challenge for them tonight, especially with the short roster, but they could persevere. If they know one thing, they, is they know how to persevere. Rooms going to the line to shoot for two after Nor Bazi calling for the foul. Just the first team foul, in fact, for St. Clair the second quarter. Bazi's first as well as Rooms makes the first two. First trip to the line, in fact. For 2018-19, the first year player for Mississauga had five rebounds, two points, and a steal in 16 minutes. The last time these two teams faced off against each, pardon me, the last matchup rather that the Eagles played in as she makes the second of two. We trim down to 16, under 2-30 to, to go in the first half. Kelly Chauvin finding Jenna Casera. Casera drives in, draws the hard whistle. And Casera down inside the paint as her teammates help her back up. And you know, it's more than often we see her take a number of bumps like we've seen her take here today. And it's basically on the same place. Mm -hmm. And that brings her to the line to shoot for two now. Second team foul of the quarter for the Eagles. And Casera, last time at the line, one for two at the strike as now St. Clair continues to lead this matchup so far. Bit of a calm here tonight, here at the St. Clair College Sportsplex, trying to win in this matchup, as she drains the second of two. Just the third to last, pardon me, in terms of the schedule, rather, the second to last home game of the year for St. Clair. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, too, they go off on the road to play against Mohawk and the Conestoga Condors, and then they have their big season, home season finale against the Fanshawe Falcons. Shot no good from Viato outside, meanwhile, as Kelly Chauvin, pardon me, Jamie Chauvin got the rebound. Kelly you know lined up with Bozzi along with Jamie Chauvin. Haley Fur now on the floor to line, line up for the five, along with Yelichny. Kelly Chauvin drives in with the right hand, gets rejected from behind, caught out of bounds as she tried to tap it back in. Eagles get the possession back, 18-point lead for St. Clair. And you can see St. Clair tightening things up. They're getting good looks to the basket, and they're finding ways to get it in, and they're drawing the fouls too, which is a good thing, because when you have a short roster like that, again, the most important thing is to take them out of the game, and this is one of those keys. A die. Pass back out to Silver. Silva. Silva, baseline. Can't get the lucky bounce. Picked up by full hard foul. Jeez. And a hard foul on the collision with Jada die up the floor. Good grief. That, that was just too close to call, JP. St. Clair keeps possession. The foul called against Jada die. That is just her second personal 13 foul. Yolichny and Kelly Chauvin off to the bench now for St. Clair. That will mean Tompkins lined up now with Bozzi along with Maroon. Watching as the shot's no good. Bozzi taps it back out. Picked up by Adai. Did Adai going coast to coast. Misses off the window again. Another St. Croix College rebound. Another one picked up by Maroon. As Bozzi misses second chance. No good. Third chance by Maroon. Can't get the bucket. Couldn't draw the held ball either as Adai gets the rebound this time. Under a minute to go in the first half. Adai, hesitating on the play. Kayla Rice tied up down low. Adai misses the triple. Rebound picked up again, St. Clair this time, Jamie Chauvin. Chauvin looking to her left. Pass deflected to Bozzi. Bozzi finding Maroon. Maroon down low to Tompkins. Gets it. Nice look. You know, the back backdoor pass is something a lot of teams really need to take notice of. That weak side defense just fell asleep over on the left side, and that allowed Tompkins just to cut in and get the easy deuce. Shot clock is off, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Fiato able to find the pass outside. Adai able to get the shot. 
able to get the triple as St. Clair just chucks up a half court prayer. After one half of play, the St. Clair Saints lead 34 to 17 over the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles. We'll take a step aside. When we come back, we'll have your halftime coverage here on We Digital Productions. Where's that University of Mississauga? Hi, I'm Curtis Joseph, former NHL goalie. You're watching We Digital. Clear College Sportsplex here on We Digital. At the half, it's the Saints 34 and the Eagles 17. Joining me is one of the assistant coaches for the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles, Haley Burns. And uh, Haley, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, I think we did a pretty good job to start the game on defense, but we had to pick it up a little bit in the second half. We kind of fell apart in the second quarter, so we had to pick up a little bit defensively in the second half, and we got to hit shots. I understand this is a short roster coming into tonight, but when it comes to the people that usually get limited minutes, this is their opportunity for them to pick up more minutes and gain more experience on the court, correct? Uh, yeah, it is. It's a very good experience for them to be able to get on the court a little bit more, get more uh, opportunities for them to be able to build our team as we are a new team and we do need them to be able to build that team. Absolutely. This is only the second year for this team here in the OCAA. What other messages are being passed across to this team knowing that this is a young team and they're going to go through that process? Uh, basically, we're just trying to build a culture at UTM, so we're trying to instill in them that it's all about effort, energy, and hard work, and I think that we're exemplifying that as a young team to try to stay competitive in the league and try to build the program. This is going to be an interesting second half. What are, what's going to be the keys for you guys? Keys for us is just going to be patience on offense, moving the ball, and trying to get wide open shots, as well as maintaining our defensive pressure that we had in the first quarter. Excellent. Thank you for your time, no Coach. Thank you. Assistant Coach Haley Burns joined me as the Assistant coach of the Mississauga Eagles. We'll have one of the assistant coaches for the St. Clair Saints after these words. Hi, everybody. This is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Welcome back. And now Phil Melanis, the assistant coach of the St. Clair Saints, join me. Phil, it was a very slow first quarter, but how did you guys pick it up in the second quarter? Well, I think our bench gave us a lift. You know, we're, we get to rest kids like Anna, Jana. They've been playing like 40 minutes a game, last three or four, and now we finally healthy. Mm -hmm. And the bench is giving us a lift, and we're scoring now. How relieving is that knowing that all the guys, almost all the ladies are there either coming off of injuries and whatnot, almost a full roster. So how relieving is that? Oh, it's, it's a huge relief on especially our starting five, right? They were coming into games thinking, oh, I have to play 40, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, right? So now they know they could come work their butts off for a good five minutes and they're going to get a rest and come back in, right? So. Ken Maroon also coming in her first game off the bench. She's just a bully on the boards right now. How much confidence does that bring for the rest of the players? Uh, getting a kid like Kim on this young team we have, She's been playing ball for a good four years, a couple years at University of Windsor. Mm -hmm. She's just, I think she's taken a lot of weight off the shoulders of these young players. And they're, they've are they accepted her on the team. They're happier than, they're just so happy that she's on the team. And she's just uh, a huge weight off their shoulders, the young kids. Absolutely. One of the issues was getting the rebounds. And yeah. Kim Maroon's been helping that out. What's going to be the keys for the second half? Well, I think it's the same thing. You know, we, we got to get good minutes from our bench and so our starters can rest and you know just keep playing keep playing missing a lot of little hoops up as well but those will come 
We'll see how that goes for the next 20 minutes. Thank you for your time, Phil. You. That's Phil Melanis, the assistant coach of the St. Clair Saints. When we come back, I'll have Royal Church join me for the stats and facts of the first half. We'll come back after this. Hi, I'm Josie, and I'm your co-host of the We Digital production, We Now. Anyone interested in promoting a business, an event, a book signing, or maybe even just making aware of the movers and shakers of Windsor Essex County, We Now can do that for you. We'll get your word out. So make sure you email me at josie at we-tv.ca to book an in-studio session that will air live on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Did you know that the most severe injuries in our region are motor vehicle crashes? 65% of road fatalities last year were directly the result of distracted driving. 90% of injuries arriving in our emergency rooms are preventable. Our message to you this summer is put down the phone, just drive. Let's work together to keep our trauma stretchers empty. We return to the St. Clair College Sportsplex once again at the half. It's the St. Clair Saints 34 and the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles 17. Aaron Sanders back with you once again. Joining me is the doctor of Windsor Basketball Royal Church. And Royal, slow start in the first quarter, but everything just picked right up for the second quarter. Yeah, um, Aaron, they seem to have trouble shooting the ball in the first quarter. 10-6 was the score. They were sluggish, missing the layups. Things were looking very good. And then, uh, and then into the game suddenly came a blast from the past. A young lady named Kim Maroon, who's 25 years old, hasn't played basketball in three years, in the paramedic program here at St. Clair. She came onto the floor and just, for a girl who hasn't played in a long, long time, six rebounds, six points. When the ball came off the backboard, she got it. How much of a presence did the Saints need from Kim Maroon because they were suffering from the rebounds in the last number of games. They, uh, good point, Aaron. They really need a presence on the board. And Kim Maroon is a big body, big strong kid, uh, great athlete, and I think she's really going to help this program. She's she's not just a fill-in, Aaron, late in the season pickup. She is a legitimate player with tremendous skills. She knows where to go. She knows how to receive the ball and square up. She knows how to position herself defensively and offensively. And I just think the world of Kim Maroon is a person too. And, uh, and I think uh, Andy's got a diamond in the rough here. It's been interesting to see as Kim Maroon has six points and six rebounds. Janet Cassero also leads the scoring at nine points, but now we shift the attention to the Mississauga Eagles. Slow start for them, of course, but they're finding more ways to get to the basket and score more points. And of course, it's being led by Jada Dyde, who has seven points. Yeah, she's uh, definitely a good player. I think her strength, obviously, is her quickness, speed. She can really get down the floor uh, uh, quickly. And um, shooting technique, not so great, but she gets to the basket and, and she can score. Uh, not many of the other girls who play for uh, UTM seem to be very good at shooting the ball, squaring up. Uh, with the right technique. So uh, they're having trouble scoring, obviously. And keep in mind, this is only their second year in the OCAA, so they're going through the process. Meanwhile, let's talk about the keys for the second half. If you're the Eagles, what do you do? Well, I think uh, the coach has to take some time to go over the press break, Aaron, because when, when uh, Sinclair puts out five of those quick kids and presses full court with that 2-2-1 two -two zone press, they're, they're uh, devastating. And uh, they, they forced a lot of turnovers from UTM with that press in the first half. So they got to solve it at halftime. Okay, in addition to that, I believe St. Clair has to keep on doing what they're doing. Pass the ball around, get good looks. And if you have Ken Morun, let her take care of business down in the post. So that's the story for you here in the first half. Again, it's the St. Clair Saints 34 and the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles 17. We'll take a quick step aside, and Justin and I will be back for the call here in the second half in just a moment. You're watching St. Clair Saints basketball here on We Digital. Hi, I'm Curtis Joseph, former NHL goalie. Goes down. Look, the the Saints. Nice shot. The Saints. He's right in. Oh, and 
Stops it behind the net. Mark for the white side. Front pocket shoots. Oh, and what a save! You're watching We Digital. Everybody, this is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Hi, I'm Josie, and I'm your co-host of the We Digital production, We Now. Anyone interested in promoting a business, an event, a book signing, or maybe even just making aware of the movers and shakers of Windsor Essex County, we now can do that for you. We'll get your word out. So make sure you email me at josie at we-tv.ca to book an in-studio session that will air live on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Did you know that the most severe injuries in our region are motor vehicle crashes? 65% of road fatalities last year were directly the result of distracted driving. 90% of injuries arriving in our emergency rooms are preventable. Our message to you this summer is put down the phone, just drive. Let's work together to keep our trauma stretchers empty. CAA men, women's basketball here from Windsor, Ontario. The St. Clair Saints lead 34 to 17 after two quarters of play. And a lot to talk about in terms of everything. Let's start off with the stats here, the live stats as they go here so far. Biggest thing that jumps out, and you can take a guess as what, in your upper left hand side, 15% shooting so far for the Eagles. And you know what? Keep in mind, they get good looks to the basket. I've been saying this since the beginning of the game, but they don't. They just haven't found a way to stay consistent on their shots. And of course, you could see the three-point shots aren't helping them out either. It's just a lot of good looks, but they can't take advantage of those opportunities. Players like Jolina Viano, 0 for 5 from deep, 1 for 4. Trisha Vo from deep. Jada Dye, 1 for 4 from deep. 0 for 3, Victoria Silver just Everyone missing outside, inside. They really, they only have six made shots. Overall, the Eagles do from the field so far and have not gone to the line too much and not have been able to, have not been able to take advantage of the Saints' seven turnovers, nine to two turno points off turnover differential. And keep in mind, if you look at those turnovers too, UTM has nine turnovers. And how many points have the Saints scored off of turnovers? Nine. It's been, e it's been equaled out to the point, but again, those costly turnovers has been what's getting UTM, you know, into a lot of fits. And it doesn't help too when St. Clair gets themselves into a trap. There has been no answers for the trap from UTM's side. Lots of fans here in attendance tonight, seen as St. Clair controls all the momentum. Just a few moments away from the start of the third quarter, your keys to the second half, Aaron. You know what, you're going to have to play defense in order to get those shots. Find some way to get the transition game going on and work with it. Jada died is the leading scorer right now with nine points. And you could see, because of the low scoring affair, it almost seems like the points are balanced. Get everybody else more involved with it and see if they could write off the adrenaline. Correction, J Jada died has seven points. The leading scorer overall of the game, Janica Serra with nine, but she's three for nine from the field. So St. Clair hasn't been immune to that scoring struggles. 31% from the field. The big storyline tonight in her first game in the OCAA, former Windsor Lancer and Bell River product, Kim Maroon. Six points, six rebounds, and an assist off the bench. And you know what? Again, that's the spark the Saints needed ever since the beginning of the season because they would usually go with a guard forward rotation. They would always use up usually end up mismatch, especially down on the glass. So for Kim Maroon to come into this team and step up the way she did, 
it brings a lot of adrenaline and like what Phil Milan has said at the halftime show, it, it takes a lot of weight off the other players' shoulders. It allows them to play their normal game instead of just stepping up and doing everything like a Swiss Army night. Exactly. And a lot of times, St. Clair, before tonight, had a lot of laps with no players above five foot eight. With Maroon now part of the system, tallest player on the St. Clair Saints women's basketball squad at six feet now. And you know what? It makes a big difference. See, you see St. Clair is going to get the possession to start the second half. Kim Maroon's on the floor, of course, taking advantage of the mismatched lineup of UTM. Lined up on the floor with Maroon, Logan Casera, Jana Casera, along with, Tom, with Tompkins, rounding out the five. Once again is Yelichny. Ja Logan Casera picked up the second chance. Back out to Yelichny for three. Off the back rim. And still ice cold are both teams shooting wise so far to start off the second half. Adai drives to the hoop. Can't get it to go. Second chance misses. And still a bit of a struggle. Coming into the night, Elizabeth D'Souza, who had the second chance, not a single point per game on the average. And no, but how about Jada Adai getting the step? It feels like she did that for nothing as Jana Casera goes inside. Again, so many opportunities that could have been if they would have got those shots to go. Jana Casera and able to Euro step her way through the traffic as we had a slight delay for a shoe needing to be tied for Janella, pardon me, Viano. One minute into the third quarter here on Lead Digital Productions, Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders as the St. Clair Saints lead 36 to 17 here in OCWA Women's Basketball Action. Pass down low to Maroon, gets tapped out of bounds with 17 still on the shot clock. Now you can see the awareness is there for UTM right now. All they have to do is just do it on both ends of the floor and make sure they stay active. Keep that feet, keep those feet moving and limit St. Clair to those close baskets. Janica Serra has it swiped away inside the lane. Viano tries to take it back up. Lined up with the Sousa, Silver alongside Oh, and Najjar battling along as Maroon gets the rebound. Two rebounds already in the corner for Maroon. Yelichny steps to the left for the jump shot again, no good. Tompkins second oh. chance, wide open. Yelichny able to come in for the last second defense with a die as the whistle's called. Hell ball situation as Ill State Eagles possession. Zelina coming in now for Maroon. How about that good look for the pass on the previous play, JP? That's just great ball awareness. Absolutely able to find the read, but even better defense. Even better defense again as St. Clair gets the steal as Janica Serra goes coast down the floor for the bucket. And once again, a nerd of turnover equals into another points off a turnover opportunity. 11, 11 points in the game. Janica Serra called for the reach. Trying to come, come on in as Alan Ajar got the re-inbound attempt. For Jenna Casera, that will be just her second personal first team foul of the third quarter. Eagles still trail by a bunch. 38-17 the scores for St. Clair over the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles. Contested three, air ball no good. Janica Sarah picks up an air rebound, trying to go up the floor, finding Yelichny, yes. Once again, she was the cutter the whole way. And when you're the trailer, when you're able to get to that position, all you have to do is score. Indeed, you have to right now. Silva passed out to Viano, meanwhile. 10 on the shot clock for the Eagles. Trying to find any way to score right now. Contested layup. Still can't find its way into the hole. This time tapped out by St. Clair. Fresh 14 as Norbazi and Kaluta Mod come into the game now for St. Clair. And that's something St. Clair, you've seen a lot of substitutions, something Andy Kiss wanted to do. In, in most recent games, a lot of players, their top players, have played all 40 minutes. Now trying to limit a lot of the better players towards 33 minutes or less. Well, keep in mind, too, Remember what I said, remember what Phil and I talked about at halftime about mm -hmm. how big of a relief it is to get players yeah. to play less minutes than usual. Exactly. Keep in mind, they had to take advantage of the situation and try to do too much of the backboard. So this is a good opportunity, a good chance for them to get a breather. Silva, no good on the trip, but Janica Sarah picks up yet another rebound here in this third quarter. 
Able to find Ahmad down the baseline, open in the paint, no good. Tapped up by the Eagles for the rebound. They try and go for the run and gun this time. Viato runs into Logan Casera, dropped for the charge. It will go back the other direction. Foul called against Viano on the charge. And the Eagles were full steam ahead based off that transition foul. So you've seen Janet Casera just pick her position. And she drew the charge. Indeed, she did right there. And Logan Casera making her first start since missing time after suffering a collarbone injury on November the 17th appeared in the game on Wednesday in limited minutes off the bench. Able to make the start today as her sister Jenna misses the triple. Able to find Selena for the second chance down the baseline. Selena no good. Ahmad open. This time it's good. Timeout called on the floor this time by the Eagles. And another stoppage here. 42-17 your score with 6.22 to go in the third as we take a look at the last play. And you see Jana running the floor here with great ball awareness. Nor Bazzi just looking for the option, waiting for the cut. Instead, goes right on over to Jana Casera, who's going to miss the three. And this is where the sequence plays out. Tompkins out rebounds down low. Silva and Kirsten Zelina go off for it. But the third chance opportunity was all Kaluta mods. No contest from her whatsoever. Indeed, right now, we like to remind you that after this game, the men's teams take the floor. Estimated tip-off time at 8 p.m. Eastern time here at the St. Croix College Sportsplex as the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles try and get a victory for their side in that one. The men's team currently coming in 3-10 and ten, ten for the Eagles, while the St. Croix Saints on a five-game losing streak and 4-10. and ten. Once again, estimated tip-off time, 8 p.m. Eastern here on We Digital Productions. Coming out of the timeout, St. Clair still controlling all the momentum. 42-17, your score here in the quarter. Still not a single point scored for the Eagles out of halftime, mind you, an 8-0 run in the first four and a half, three and a half minutes for St. Clair in the quarter. But you have to understand they're going through a process right now, so they're not going to execute the perfect shots right away. And you could see that going on only in their second year in the OCAA. Yeah. They're trying their best. You have to give them credit for that, but Again, you have a goose egg on your side during the third quarter. You have to find some way to get more people involved. It can't be Jenna Dye or Trisha Vogue the whole way. A die, no good on the shot. Picked up by Silva for the second chance at a fresh 14. Back outside, Fiano, no good. Still, the Eagles can't buy a bucket to start off this third quarter. Across the floor goes to Norbazi. Norbazi off the front rim. Selena picks up the rebound. Second chance just rims out off the screws. And you know, still, just the way this game has gone so far. And you know what? Nobody should be surprised at that, but a good attempt from Kirsten Zelina. 13 on the shot clock for the Eagles. Double team inside. Avanajar tries to pass it outside. Goes off a referee. Stays Eagle possession with seven on the shot clock. And of course, you got to remember, not just the building process for this year, there's a lot of players that are injured coming in, as we've talked about, just eight active players tonight, as a die makes the bucket. She had that out. She got that extended right arm, and she was able to have enough balance and enough power just to put it right in. Rebound picked up on the miss this time by Trisha Vo. And going back to Jada Dye, second year guard from London, UK, mind you. So coming from over across the pond as Bozzi got the, the block. And keep in mind too, U, U of T has players from Syria, Turkey. They have done their homework on these players and they got interesting background stories to boot. Indeed they do. Missed shot that time from St. Clair. 42-19 your score just past the halfway mark of the third. Nearly stolen away that time. Elena Ajar able to pass it along now by Adai inside the paint. Can't get the lucky roll. Second chance picked up back to Adai. Adai weaves on through, rejected. And whistle called, nine seconds still on the shot clock for the Eagles. And full platoon substitution coming in for St. Clair. As now for the first time tonight, we see onto the floor for St. Clair, Marissa Mara coming in. Also alongside Jamie Chauvin, Logan Casera, Anya Lichney, rounding the five, Kaylee Chauvin. So a lot of chances for players to get experience as Viato 
also rushes back onto the floor, now coming in for a die for the inbound. And as the inbounds pass is about to be thrown, JP, the interesting part about this game is the UOT Eagles have yet to score consecutive baskets. And that's some, that's unheard of, I don't think, in terms of some stat-wise. Rooms, shot clock violation got blocked, and they say St. Clair possession. Still 42-19, your score, 423 to go in the third. And talking about some of those interesting stories, let's bring up, for example, Gianna Alan Ajar, who has been somewhat of an impact player on the defensive side, especially tonight for the Eagles. Well, second year player from Mississauga, third in rebounding with 12 rebounds a game. Had also torn her ACL and MCL at 18, a year and a half of recovery for her. And keep in mind, you see her wear number 14. That's when she started playing basketball. So for her, this is a yeah. road of redemption and recovery for her. Time I'll call it St. Clair as Alan Ajar actually forces the shot clock violation, poking the ball loose as the shot clock reached down to one. We are proud to welcome for the 14th annual Westby Awards keynote speaker, Nicholas Winstrom. Meanwhile, the Westby's will be held Monday, April 15, 2019 at the Glottal Club in Windsor, Ontario. Visit the Westby's.ca and nominate a deserving athlete for their Westby Award. Tickets available soon. A great event, of course, here in Windsor, Essex County for the sports community. And year after year, we get in incredible guest speakers. We had Nadia Kamenichi last year, and this year we get the Red Wings legend, Nicholas Ridstrom. This is going to be an interesting Westby Awards, so get those tickets as soon as they're available. You're going to have a good evening. Indeed you will. That fan sitting in the lap of that parent also having a good evening, it looks like, with the Boomsticks, watching as St. Clair leads 42 to 19. One thing I do want to note, you may notice with the warm-up shirts right now for the women's team, a charity event that's been going on for the past little bit for the 24-hour fundraiser, the clock, the Hooping Around the Clock fundraiser for January 25th to 26th, starting at 3 p.m. on the 25th, with this being the final games of the fundraiser this year. And you know what? This fundraiser has been successful in the last few years, like you said. We've seen a couple of St. Clair alumni play in this over the last number of years. Ricardo Tate, for one. I've seen Jimmy Parsons over there playing in one of his games just a couple hours before tip-off. So again, you see a lot of people come out for a great cause, and it's just <laughs> relaxing and relieving to see this campaign be successful as it is for another year. St. Clair able to force the turnover that time down the baseline with under four minutes to go in the third. On the floor for St. Clair, you watch him finding its way to Kelly Chauvin along with Mara, Jamie Chauvin, Logan Casera, as that is a battle poked away by the Eagles. Eagles back on off, Saints. Not using much of the full court press this quarter with the big lead. Shot no good inside. Second chance picked up though once again. Outside for the triple. Rolled out once again, no good. Kelly Chauvin with a rebound. But to get back to the charity event that's been happening for January 25th to 26th, also gave away a lot of prizes, including autographed gear and balls, Dwayne, Ke uh, Dwayne Casey autographed basketball amongst the prizes given away during the games as Logan Casera misses. Rebound picked up by St. Clair as Kelly Chauvin draws the held ball. St. Clair keeps possession with a fresh 14. And you know what also complements the Dwayne Casey gear? The lower bowl tickets for a future Pistons game they also have up for grabs too. Mm-hmm, indeed. Of course, that's been going on for the past couple of days as well going on right now. You see with three minutes to go in this third quarter, a St. Clair lead that sh has not shown many signs of slowing down at the moment. Maroon back onto the floor as Mara gets the pass intercepted. Taken up the floor by Kayla Rice, able to pass it back. Alan Ajar back and forth. Setting up the offense, now Viato. Viato pulls up for the three, still off the mark. Another shot missing either on an air ball or to the right, unfortunately, for her tonight. Mara in the corner, meanwhile, to respond no good. Maroon gets the rebound over traffic. Couldn't get the second chance. And Maroon continues to hustle on the boards, her seventh rebound of the game. And no matter who grabbed down the rebound, she, she, stood, she stayed right on with the defensive assignment until they brought it up court. She's going right back to the mid-range game to try to steal the ball. On the shot, Vo, no good this time. Jamie Chauvin 
Knocks out of bounds. Eagles keep possession with 2.08 to go in the quarter. And Viato has been starting to get more and more active on offense as so she'll set up on the inbound. First year player from Milton, Ontario, a forensic psychology program major, had played high school ball for Jean Venier CSS, a good ball handler and court awareness player with her time so far. And you know what, you could see that from her right from the get-go. She, she's a player that's really perseverant. We've seen her take a couple of falls early on in the first quarter and she was able to come through and keep on playing for the Eagles. Now her shot no good that time from a die as Jamie Chauvin gets double team. Back out to Logan. Able to beat their way past the eight second violation. As you let she able to find Mara. Chucks up another three. Another one bounces for no good. Still ice cold from the field are both teams in this one. Jamie Chauvin pass down low maroon. This time off the front rim again. Adai picks up the rebound trying to take it towards coast to coast. Stepping into the paint, misses left. Picked up by Jamie Chauvin. Hell ball situation potentially as it's poked around a couple times. Eagles get possession. And Maroon sees that one poked out of bounds to 42-19. Under 90 seconds to go in the quarter, mind you, just eight points scored in the third quarter, still by St. Clair. Just two for the Eagles. A low scoring third quarter, once again, showing overtones of their last meeting. I don't know if I've seen a game like this in a while, actually, in terms of offensive futility as a die misses the triple. Logan Casero picks up the rebound this time. Who's going to be able to buy a bucket here? Approaching a minute to go in the third as the ball's tossed to Andy Kiss instead for the turnover. Logan Casero, the intended player for the pass. Janet Casera comes on back in. And of course, with this being a newer program, one of the players on the floor for the University of Toronto, Mississauga Eagles, who has been some, getting some more and more touches as time goes on. A member of the soccer team, in fact, number five, Kayla Rice, pointing at the shooting guard spot for this possession. And keep in mind, too, when, when you have multi-sports experience, especially in the same year, you're, you're able to stay active. You, you won't be able to have enough rust on you. You won't, ha you won't gain rust, that's why I'm trying to say. And she's not the only player that has multi-sports experience. And for the first time in the third quarter, we have somebody able to break the double-digit mark for points scored as a team. Logan Casera able to take advantage of the bad pass to Rice to go coast to coast. Under 40 seconds to go in the third. Pass to Rice, again deflected by Logan Casera. Casera slows it back on down for St. Clair, finding Tompkins. Tompkins misses the three. Rebound picked up this time by Rooms. Rooms. Passed on off as the shot clock's off. Down the baseline, Viato. Pass outside, misses a die, keeps it just in the front court. Still nine seconds to work with in the quarter. Corner three, bounces in. That time, Viano getting the three. One and a half seconds for Logan Casera, half court. Can't make the rim. And after a rough third quarter, 44-22 is your score here on Weed Digital Productions. We'll be back right after this for the final 10 minutes of regulation. Hi, I'm Curtis Joseph, former NHL goalie. This is shooting. Oh, Butcher goes down. Look front the bird to drive the save. Pass to the nice shot to the save. And he's right in. Oh, and Gerson. Stops it behind the net. Horst with a white side of front talk and shoots. Oh, and what a save. And you're watching We Digital. This is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. 
Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Welcome back, everyone, to the St. Clair College Sportsplex as the St. Clair Saints are in full control. Lead by 22, 44 to 22, your score. After three quarters of play here on Weed Digital Productions, Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders. 10 to 5 was the score advantage for the Saints in that third quarter, to say the least. The fans are having fun. The players, if you are a fan of offense and looking to build on something for the next matchups, not so much. No, if you're an offensive fan or whatnot, you're not getting much out of it today. But keep in mind, if you're on the defensive side of things, you're really impressed at how things are working real well. You've seen St. Clair earlier in the game apply that full court press. They laid out of that for a little bit and just made sure they played defense on the, on the half court. And we're seeing a lot more minutes being played from more bench players than usual. Driving down the baseline, meanwhile, Adai able to find the pass outside. Rooms spins in, poked away. Stolen away once again by St. Clair. Logan Casera contested, jump shot, no good once again. Logan Casera on the game, just one made shot on seven attempts so far. The other way able to find Adai. Lined up on the floor with Rooms. Adai still on the ground. And a whistle called after a few seconds. They point St. Clair possession as a die is down on the floor. Have another look at this. As Viado drives right down. You see Anno Lichny cutting right down in the middle yeah. just to wear off any passes. But this is where the this is where that moment happened. Jada die. Yeah. Hip check for yeah. Logan Casera. Hip check and look a little bit like the leg too. And there was no whistle, of course, when she went down. You've seen three Saints players to hesitate before they all trying to dive down and for the Air Force to travel or try and get the hell of ball. Well, keep in mind, it's all about awareness. You don't want to hit somebody's leg by accident if you're mm -hmm. going for the loose ball. So it's sportsmanship at the same time, but you have to really get down the ball and try to make something happen. About one minute into this fourth quarter here on Weed Digital Productions as the St. Clair Saints lead 44-22. Kaluta Mott puts up the contested three to try and beat the buzzer, couldn't get it. Tasha Rooms with the rebound this time. Lined up with Viato, lined up as well with Alan Ajar rounding out the five. Rice in a die for the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles. Size down up Viato, able to find Rice. Outside with five to the baseline. Alan Ajar going for the reversal, couldn't touch the rim. And we'll go back the other direction as Tompkins comes in now for Norbazi. And Janet Casera, as you see her, has been the leading scorer so far today. 13 points, seven rebounds, five assists on triple double watch. Mm -hmm. Once again, that's been the usual case for her this season. Quick three. Able to drain the triple, her first of the night. Now just under 50% from the field for Janet Casera. Stolen away by Yelichny, meanwhile, as the press comes back in. Logan, able to find a mod, yes. Five straight points for St. Clair in the quarter. And yeah, Kaluta Mod made up for that off the dribble shot, which went south. Rice tries to take it back down, meanwhile, for the, okay. for the Eagles. Piano, able to find the outside man. Adai drills the triple. You see that release right there. That was automatic. And Jada Dai. And yes, you're going to hear this correctly with the triple. Full five of 22 for the field tonight. Nearly stolen away from Tompkins. It's stolen away as she tries to dive back down. A die coming up with it. A die for shot 23 misses. Logan Casera picks up an air rebound for St. Clair. 7.23 to go in this fourth quarter is Tompkins. Pass to Alondio she misses Logan Casera. Bump pass to Janet Casera for the two. No. Picked up on the rebound. Alanajar this time. After this matchup, the Eagles go back onto the road to play Lampton tomorrow for the Sunday matchup. That is around the Sarnia area. Then back home to Conestoga. Then back on the road to Sheridan Mohawk. Then at home, Niagara on the road. Redeemer for the rest of their schedule as St. Clark gets another steal and tries to take a coast-to-coast -coast misses. 
Tap to the bounds. Eagles ball. And it goes off of Logan's foot. But again, still a tough schedule to try and finish off the year with some of those teams. Now keep in mind, Lampton is not what their record represents. Yeah. They picked up a major win against St. Clair. They show a lot of heart. Then you have a Conestoga team that, again, still showing ways of improvement. And then you have Sheridan and Mohawk. Those are two hard places to win at. And then the Knights, and then of course, they're over at Redeemer. So again, it's a tough schedule for them, but they'll be able to pick up a couple of wins there because they show a lot of heart and they show a lot of hustle on the offensive floor. Jamie Chauvin showing a lot of hustle to the buck at that time. Brings the lead up to 51-25. Just three, just make it five points, three points rather in the quarter so far for the Eagles with four minutes to go in regulation. On the outside, swung back inside. Seven on the shot clock. Pass from Silva, able to find its way. Viano, Viano contests a jumper, air balls it. Goes back out of bounds to go back the air direction. As you look at the St. Clair bench, pending a collapse, a 26-point lead, mind you, a victory for them looking to be well in hand to not trying to give the commentators curse, so to speak, but a chance for them to go above 500 after having a rough semester so far. Second chance, meanwhile, put back in. Maroon gets two rebounds and the basket. 12 rebounds now for Maroon, meanwhile, and now chance to go up to nine points, as you'll see here. We said at the beginning of the telecast, the Saints were missing a lot of presence from the boards, and boy, did Kim Maroon rise up. In considering this is her first game, and first basketball game in the last couple of years, she's able to make an outstanding impact, mostly from the rebounds. Yeah, graduated from the University of Windsor just a little while ago, now a part of the paramedics program for the 25-year-old. Stolen away again by St. Clair. Jamie Chauvin, back out to Tompkins. Tompkins finds Yelechny for the triple. Yes! And Yelechny brings it back up now to 30-plus points. 5.13 to go in the fourth. At this point, with the Eagles, you can take some positives, though, especially with the first half, I think, defensively, from how they were able to lock down the interior play for St. Clair and basically force St. Clair to what is currently just 31% 30, shooting area. Yeah, keep in mind, too, you look at the low-scoring third quarter as well. That shot will go, but again, I agree with you on that. They just have, they have a good execution to swing the ball around and get the shots. The problem is they don't execute to finish strong on those shots. Jamie Chauvin back with it, down low Maroon, in the post for the double-double, no. Misses on the shot, tries to draw the held ball, and it'll stay St. Clair possession with 14 on still on the shot clock. Substitution coming back in now as it's gonna be Jamie, Jana Cacera getting some adjustments on the bench, along with Delitchin going off, Tompkins off for Logan Cacera, along with Zelina, along with Bazzi. So 29 point lead, 444 to go. As the ball is tapped out of bounds, stays Sinclair possession. But still remember, the men's teams play at about 8 p.m. Eastern time and the men's team has been needing to get back on track as well. Because mm -hmm, St. Clair has been riding on a losing streak ever since the year began. Keep in mind, at the beginning of the year they played in the George Brown Invitational. Good look for Kirsten Tompkins, but again, what the record shows is they're on a losing streak. They would have a strong first half, but they can't capitalize in the final 20 minutes. Good banker. Bank shot is good this time. Victoria Silva, a 17.5% shooter from the field this season, drains the triple. Had a rebound and a steal in her last game in 26 minutes. Selena air balls the mid-range jump shot, meanwhile. Still four minutes to go. Slowing it on down, Viato. Viato lined up with the Rice in the front court, in the back court rather. Back outside, Silva. Silva swings it back out. Anajar misses off the front rim. Bazzi draws the jump ball. And it will stay Eagles possession. As the fans watch on here, you continue to see them watch as St. Clair leads 59-31. Some members of the Windsor Valiants in part of that group, as it looks like, we're going to see Tanae Freckleton come into the game. 
for Jamie Jovan. And once again, a perfect time for her to come around. She's well known for her master lock defense. Getting some time now for playing experience. Shot no good for the Eagles. As yeah, they'll go back to St. Clair. 3.43 to go. And right now, one of the first players off the bench, pardon me, the, that means basically everyone active except for Raven Williams has seen minutes so far here tonight. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind too, we said throughout the game, this is the first time we've seen basically a full roster for St. Clair in quite some time. So everybody's getting the minutes necessary for them to take advantage of it. Ball tapped out of bounds right towards our direction. Silva, the intended player for the pass, as he'll go back to St. Clair. With 3.23 to go, we talked about this a little bit before on Wednesday off camera that St. Clair had been in a, on a losing skid on, in terms of home games as well. The last time they won at home, November the 16th against Mohawk in a 90-43 win. Right now, 3-13 away from breaking that curse, Aaron. And you know what? Home court means a whole lot as you approach to the playoffs yeah. as a shot clock violation is called. But there's another fact that you noticed to me, too, off the air, that in those last three games, both the men's and women's team have lost those games as well. It's a type of streak you have to break, too, because, again, it shows a lot about consistency. Indeed on that one. Shot no good again for the Eagles. Back to St. Clair goes the ball. Kelly Chauvin and Mara come in. Zelina and Bazi off. Looks like they also signal here for Logan Cassara to head towards the benches here. So it's Logan Cassara and Zelina coming out. Janet Cassara staying in along with Mara, Bazi, Kelly Chauvin and Freckleton. 2.45 to go in the fourth quarter. St. Clair with a chance to go above 500. Bossy for three. No good. Chase is down her own miss, but tapped out of bounds once again. You know, I like that confidence from Nora Bassey. Once she had the open shot, she just took it. Unfortunately, it went to the side, but you know what? Those are the type of shots you have to take when you're down in the corner. Eagles get possession once again with 2.36 now on the clock as you look at the inbound play in the bench for the Saints. Getting back to Norbazi, of course, we talked about her coming off concussion protocol, the first shooter player from Windsor in the pre-health science major as the whistle is called. This is going to be called against Freckleton on the personal to send the Eagles to the line for the first time in the half, I believe, here. Unbelievable, in fact, just three of four from the game, the Eagles, just the first time at the stripe the entire half, Aaron. Mm -hmm. And that first free throw is missed, but I'm looking at the other stats too, JP. Yeah. Saints Six. out rebounding U of T, 52 to 41. That's a good look. And the number of those are off the defensive glass. 31 off the defense, offensively 21. And the assist shows how good of a look St. Clair's been getting. Jump. Up. Another hell ball situation. This time, St. Clair gets the possession arrow as they get possession on back. And just six of seven for the stripe St. Clair is, so neither team has gone to the line that much. At this point, it's just been a mix of forcing turnover St. Clair to grow this lead, having more opportunities, and making 14 more shots in part as Janica Sarah makes it plus 15 in the main shot category. Once again, that baseline drive is good once you have enough hesitation to get enough space to drive inside. 30-point lead under two minutes to go. As foul called, Kelly Chauvin on the defense as Logan Cassara now getting her hand wrapped up with what appears to be ice on the right hand, Aaron. That's right. And you know, L Logan's been working hard in the last two games just to get back in tip-top condition on the floor. And unfortunately, she sees a number of bumps and bruises along the way. Again, she came back from a collarbone injury in the middle of November, so it takes a little while to get back into the game, especially into the number of minutes she was accustomed to playing. So hopefully it's just a minor minor injury or a minor hit to the wrist as the free throw goes. And to the line is Viano, a 58% free throw shooter, shooting 28% coming into tonight from the field overall. 9.5 points per game for the first year player as we talked about her earlier making the second. 
brings the lead back down to 28 in a very slow-paced final quarter. 61-33, a minute 45 to go. Freckleton, back out to Yolechny. Yolechny tries to spin away from traffic. Down low, back to Yolechny, back outside. Mara for the quick three. Off balance, three goes off the stanchion and out of bounds. And at this point, what do you take from me if you're either team at this point, knowing that it's a big loss, it's a losing streak up to double digits now for the Eagles and for St. Clair back in above 500? Well, if you're TM, if you're UTM, you have to shake it off because you're on the road again tomorrow. But you have to be aware, you have to rest up as best as you can. It'll most likely be a short roster as we get a quick foul holding called. And it goes against the UTM Eagles, but for St. Clair. Well, for St. Clair, you know, this is a relief. Again, Phil Milan has said at halftime it's a relief to take the weight off of a lot of players' shoulders, try to get them to overpower themselves, try to get to the glass and everything. And with Kim Maroon on their side, they were able to do just that tonight. So players, you'll see players as the weeks go on, they'll get back to their normal roles. So this is a first start for them to get back to that. Yoetchny, third trip of the night, second in this quarter. Brings the lead up to 64-33. Under a minute to go in the fourth, 42 seconds to go in the fourth. Ball being tapped around down low, whistle called, and one. Avanajar draws the whistle in the contact. She'll go to the line to shoot one. So the Eagles have that in the positive column as well. Oh, absolutely. Well, they've been drawing fouls as much as they can. It didn't show it here in the second half, but you could see why they were able to draw it up. And after the second chance deflected around, rather, you see getting the ball poked loose, and it will just put it up with the right hand. Yeah, Marara. They, they wave off the free throw. It looks like 35 points now in the game for the Eagles. Janica Sarah finds Mara, meanwhile. Mara gets the triple. Shot clock even at 24 seconds to go in the fourth. A big win morale-wise for the St. Clair Saints by the University of Toronto Mississauga Eagles as they see the shot clock turn off will fall to 10 games straight loss to 4-10 and 10 on the season as the St. Clair Saints move back above 500 and a big win morale-wise. They win 66-35. to 35. And a big situation, a big game win for the Saints, winning their first home game since mid-November after losing four straight games on home court. Home court advantage, potentially back. We'll have to see, though. They still have one more game, the women's side, on February the 8th against Fanshawe. We'll take a step aside when we come back with we'll post-game coverage. Your final score, St. Clair Saints 66, University of Toronto, Mississauga Eagles 35 on Weed Digital Productions. Hi, I'm Curtis Joseph, former NHL goalie. You're watching We Digital. on Wii TV. I'm joined right now by the player of the game for the St. Clair Saints, Kim Maroon. And Kim, first off, congratulations on a good first game. I know, I know the scoring wasn't great on both sides tonight, but what worked out for the Saints? Uh, you know what? They didn't give up, and we ran them. We made them tired. That's pretty much all we could do. And you know what? One of the assignments that St. Clair was looking for is to be aggressive on the boards. How much did you help out with that tonight? Uh, I did what I could. Um, a little out of shape, obviously, but that's been my job. Every team that I've played for, I've been a rebounder and playing under the net. So you played for the you played for the University of Windsor, and I'm sure that helped out along the way too. Yeah, I was pretty small on that team. I was a small forward, so 
playing against a little bit shorter girls now would definitely give me a little bit of advantage. What was it like playing uh, your first game in quite some time? Uh, exhausting. Absolutely exhausting, yeah. yeah. I can see that. I'll give I'll give you a chance to take a breather. Thank you for your time. Congratulations. Oh, that's Kim Maroon, the player of the game for the St. Clair Saints. As they do it, they break a two-game losing streak, and the Mississauga Eagles drop to 10 losses in a row, unfortunately. That covers the story here for game one of our doubleheader. Game two is coming up for the men's team as the Eagles and Saints will do battle in just about 20 minutes. So we invite you to tune in on that. We want to thank you for joining us here in the women's portion of the doubleheader, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. This is Aaron Sanders. You're watching We Digital. We'll be back after this.